Lori Steger. I am the career instructor here at Beacon College. A little bit about myself, I've been at Beacon, this is my seventh year. I started out as a learning specialist. I was a learning specialist for five years. Um, my master's is in library and information science, and that's why I really was interested in the career component, because all of my, almost all of my library classes had some type of job or career component built into them. Because if you think about it, when people are unemployed, where do they go for help for careers? The library. So there was a lot of career resume writing, job searching, filling out applications. There was a lot of that embedded in all of my classes. So when this position came available, it's like, oh, I really want to do that. And they let me. So um, I've developed a program. It's a three semester program. It's a sophomore, junior, and senior level program. And they are mandatory. If you're going to get a bachelor's degree, you have to take all three of them. With the exception of um, if somebody transfers in or is an older student, we can't opt them out of the sophomore level because they usually have already had that kind of information just from life experience. So Ms. Denora Ramos is new to Beacon and she'll introduce herself. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Dinora Ramos. I am the director for the career development department here in, at Beacon College. I've been with Beacon for about two months. Um, I recently relocated from Houston, Texas. Um, I've been doing this job for about 10 years um, now. And I enjoy what I do a lot. I'm learning a lot on a daily basis. I'm enjoying working with the students. So I look forward to the opportunity of sharing a lot of information of what we do at the Career Development Center. Morning, everyone. My name is Esteban Lopez. Uh, you can hear from my accent that I'm a native of Ecuador in South America. I have lived in the US for about 13 years. I have about 12 years of experience in higher education. I have worked for the government as well for about five years, um, five years in banking. So um, some experience on that as well. My role is basically is to drive around the state, mostly to the Orlando area, and kind of recruit companies and internships and get job opportunities for our students. I also do fundraising for the institution and everything that has to do with institutional development for Beacon College. Um, because there's only the three of us, sometimes Dinora is in a career fair, Rory is doing something else, and sometimes I help students with their resumes or something like that in my office as well. So there's always someone available for your kids in our area. Yeah, we all have very open door policies. So if they can't oh, find yeah. one of us, they'll find the other ones. So three semesters of career preparation. So why, is, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Because we want your kids to get jobs after they graduate from college, just like you do. Just like you do. It's, it's important. I mean, you get that wonderful piece of paper and you're so proud of it, but without some idea of what you're going to do afterwards, it's just that. It's a piece of paper. So, yeah, we want to help them get the, um, the mindset of what you're going to be like after, after graduation. Try to make it not quite so scary. Give them the tools and the experiences, hopefully, that, they can, that they'll need after and help them to transition. One way we do help transition is we do have an internship requirement. We're going to talk about that more in a little bit. So the career education helps them take responsibility for their own career path. I'm not doing it for them. Ms. Ramos isn't going to do it for them. Mr. Lopez isn't going to do it for them. They have to do it for themselves, but we will definitely guide them and give them the tools and what they need to do it. So 2606 career exploration is a sophomore level class. And in this one, we start with basic business etiquette. We go through the different majors, some of the careers that are going to go with those majors. Um, I do some formal and some informal different types of assessments to find out likes, dislikes, what you're good at, what you're not good at. Because sometimes what you want to do, you're not really that good at. So you may want to broaden that up a little bit. Or something you're really good at, you may not want to do. So we try to, you know, come up with all of those different scenarios. So the Beacon College majors, we've added a couple just since I've been here. So we have anthrozoology, business management, business management, hospitality track, computer information systems, web and digital, computer information, information systems, human services, interdisciplinary studies, psychology, and studio arts. So for a small college, we actually have quite the different amount of majors. And they're pretty broad. I mean, everything from psychology to anthrozoology. So not too bad for a little place. So anthrozoology is our newest major. It's only been offered for about a year and a half now. And we've had a lot of students come to Beacon just because of the anthrozoology major. We are the only warm place you can get this major. The other one is Montana and um, England. So we're the only warm place you can get this major. 
Um, the, the master's program that all three of our instructors went to is in Buffalo, New York. So again, we're the only warm place. So anthrozoology is the study of the human and animal connection. And so it's not just animal-based. It's basically both together. And there's a lot of different careers that can go with this. It's conducting research, animal-assisted, canine equine program director, canine trainer, working in zoos, aquarium, wildlife rehabs, um, humane society, and animal rescue. Um, this is, like I said, probably one of our more popular degrees lately because everybody loves animals. But is everybody going to make it through this degree? Maybe not. It's a pretty brutal degree. There's some classes in here that are going to require some real dedication. And if they have that dedication, you can, you can have that love of animals, but you also got to have that dedication to go with it. So it's, it's a pretty intense major, and I'm really happy it's here. I volunteer at a zoo as well, so the kids come to me a lot to ask questions about that as well. So this is a really awesome new major. Business management. Our business management was developed by Dr. Fleming. And he really incorporated a lot of different things in it. It's not just business management per se. There's a lot of computer classes in it. There's a, um, a bit of a human resources component to it. So it's a very broad major, which helps a lot. Customer service, sales, management, business analyst, human resources generalist. We've actually had a couple of students graduate and go into that. Um, some business administration, entrepreneurship. We have a large entrepreneurship component to it now with um, Dr. Bono. He teaches several entrepreneur classes. So a lot of the students are really interested in opening their own businesses. Then the hospitality track, perfect for Central Florida because we have Disney, we have Universal, we have SeaWorld, we have it all. So <laughs> hospitality is another one of our really large majors. Um, a lot of the students want to go into ho um, hotel management and front desk and a lot of that stuff. And again, uh, Mr. Vaz and Mr. Bono, or Dr. Bono, I'm sorry, and Dr. Fleming have combined their knowledge and built this major, which is pretty amazing. Travel and tourism, event planning, um, also, um, what do you call it when people set up your vacations? Vacation planners, yeah, that's an easy way to put it. Vacation planning is another thing that a lot of people have gone into from this major. And then we have CIS, the web and digital track, which our G is in that right now. Um, web design, advertising design, graphic design, so many different aspects again to it. Um, Sandy Novak put this together with Dr. Fleming and again made it quite broad so there's not just one specific thing. If they go into this, there's a lot of different um, type of careers that they are prepared to do. Um, CIS, um, of course graduate school is one thing, database design, database management. Online communication, cer cer security certificate. Certifications, there we go. Um, assistive technology in school, this is huge. Every school district now requires to have an assistive technology component in, within their school districts. And Dr. Fleming actually teaches a really amazing assistive technology class here. And some of the things the students have come up with have been amazing. I mean, they came up with um, software, it was um, like eyeball recognition software. They've come up with ways for people with physical disabilities to still be able to maneuver a mouse. Did you take that one? Gotcha. I'm, I'm in it. You're in it now? So, I mean, it's just so cool. He lets them, like, come up with anything they want. I mean, there's no, like, rules to this. They, their imagination is the only limiter in this class, and they've come up with some amazing things. Um, medical records clerk, desk op front desk operators, help desk operators. I've had several students graduate and go right into Convergis, which is a help desk for some of the largest computer companies in the, in the world. And federal government, of course. Oh, we're also doing certi certifications like A++ and things like that on site now, which is new. We haven't done that before. Um, human services. Human services is broad. It's the human field, helping humans, helping other humans. So this field, again, is super broad and will um, help students to prepare for many different careers, everything from substance abuse counselors to daycare managers, teaching assistants. We have a lot of students that have graduated and gone into teaching assistants, and some of them have worked their way up into the daycares and turned into daycare assistant managers. So this is, again, really, really broad. Interdisciplinary studies, now called humanities. I still call it interdisciplinary studies because humanities to me is just class, but no, that's a whole degree. And again, 
interdisciplinary studies, at least when I knew college, when I was looking at colleges so many years ago, the only thing that prepared you to do was go to graduate school. But again, here at Beacon, that's not the way we think about things. We think about things to prepare them for life immediately out of college. Yes, it's going to prepare you to go to graduate school, but it's also going to give you so much in writing and so much in literature and in history and things like that that it would let a student graduate right with their bachelor's degree and go out into the workforce. Um, journalism, sales and marketing, again, education, human resources, bankers. We have students that graduated with um, humanities degrees and work in banks. So again, a really good education, not just to go to graduate school like I thought it was. Psychology, this is one of our tougher majors. Psychology, again, this one, I do tell the students when they choose to be in psychology that they're probably going to have to go on to an advanced degree if they want to make any kind of money because psychology is not something you can just go out with a bachelor's degree other than like social work, career counseling, rehabilitation specialists, um, genetic counselors. I thought that was really cool. I hadn't thought about that before. I found that when I was looking online and that's actually got a huge job growth potential. But so graduate studies would be the most likely immediate path after this one. Studio arts, this is our second to newest major. Our studio arts program is intense. I would probably say this is one of our most difficult majors. Our art instructors are very, very good at what they do. They're very, very passionate about what they do. Therefore, they really put the students through the ringers on what they do. They are good when they get out of this major. It isn't just painting, it's painting, it's drawing, it's ceramics, it's um, welding, it's wood art, you name it, they do it. And they have an experience in all of it. So many, many different mediums. And they also learn how to install their art, not just create their art, but how to install it, how to display it. They have to write up artist statements about every single piece that they make. So this is a pretty intense degree, but like I said, when they leave this degree, they are good. So we've got a lot of different choice, a, little, a lot of different things that influence your career choice. Your skills, your abilities, what are you good at? I mean, if you're terrible at math, you're not going to want to be a math teacher. You're not going to enjoy it, so you're not going to want to get into that. Um, your interests, your personality type, your life roles. Um, I do a, a career family tree, which makes the students look at what their parents, their grandparents, their great-grandparents, their aunts and their uncles have done for careers. And a lot of it's very eye-opening for them. And they're like, well, look at all the teachers in there. No wonder I want to be a teacher. I'm like, yeah, it's because you've been around it your whole life. Um, Previous experience, your culture, your social economic conditions, childhood fantasies. A lot of people know exactly what they want to do from the time they're very little. And others of us didn't. So, you know, we just keep trying different things until we find what we like. So business etiquette, how to introduce themselves, making eye contact, that proper introduction, um, handshakes. Boy, do we do handshakes, don't we, Katya? Katya, do I make you do handshakes or what? Yeah, they get tired of it. But it's important. It's important. That's your first impression upon meeting somebody. And it's very hard to erase if you've made a bad one. Um, networking, cell phone use, when to and when not to. Yeah. Business talk, complimenting, asking questions, don't interrupt, don't use slang and jargon. We go through this a lot. And then we have a personality test that we do. Very, very abbreviated version. And I'm going to make you guys, well, you don't have to do it, but you can. This is the most abbreviated version of Myers-Briggs you'll ever see. <laughs> so what it is is question one, how do you get your energy? I know a lot of people think extrovert, introvert. Extrovert, love to be around people. Introvert, can't stand to be around people. That's really not what it is. I'm very introverted, believe it or not, because I don't, yeah, I am. It's because I don't get energy from people. I expel a lot of energy when I'm doing this. So after a day of teaching, I get in my car, I don't turn on the radio, I have to have complete silence for the hour drive home because I have to regain my energy. But a lot of people, like our, Dr. Nance, who teaches our psychology classes, she might come into class, but by the end of class, she is like this, because she's getting energy from that. So that's really what extrovert and introvert is. So take a look at the different qualities of the extroverts and introvert. Pick one. Pick one. Are you an E or are you an I? Believe it or not, like I said, I'm an I. Is 
obviously a lot of discussions going on. It's all about you. It's not about your neighbor. I better be. I am very, not very introverted. I'm not as much as I used to be. You can actually change. Do we have our E's and I's? All right, so question two. Are you a sensor or an intuitive? Are you a, do you get your information from your senses or do you go with your gut? Do you need to have that data? Do you need to have that feedback? Do you need to touch things, feel things, take them apart, put them back together again? Or do you see the big picture and you like those theories and abstracts and creative and imaginative? I am so sensor, it's not even funny. <laughs> A little food for thought. All right, question three. Thinkers or feelers? Thinkers use their head. They make their decisions based on logic. Where the feelers, they're going by their heart. Their heart's going to overrule their head every time. The feelers are the poets. I don't even understand poetry. <laughs> I understand the words, but it was like, well, don't you get the deeper meaning with them? <laughs> I'm a scientist by heart. And then question four. How much do you plan ahead? So judgers, <laughs> organize, structure, got to have that plan, got to keep to that plan, go crazy if that plan doesn't work out. But the perceivers, yeah, they're just going to kind of go with the flow, casual, relaxed. They're able to change and adapt quickly. Definitely not me. Let, to life, let life just happen. Nope, I want all my ducks in a row. So, now think about your four letters. Think about your four letters. There's a lot of different combinations. There is a lot of different combinations. And then there's careers that go with those. So the I's, the ISTJs, which is me, I'm the realist. And if you see the very bottom one, librarian, that is my, that is my last degree, I should say. And then you've got the protector, the helper, the administrators, the artists, the builder, the performers, the doers. And then you've got the champions, the advocate, the mediator, the teacher, the scientist, the commander, the inventor, or the mastermind. And I do this in my, um, in my sophomore level class, and they are amazed at what there's come out with a lot of times and what the possibilities can be. So just a little idea of some of the things that I do to try to help them figure out what might be a good fit for them, what might not be a good fit for them. A lot of companies these days use Myers-Briggs as part of the evaluation for hiring because everything is so, everything is so team oriented now. If you aren't going to fit in with the team, you're not going to be happy and the team's not going to be happy. So they use a lot of the personality tests now to judge whether or not you're going to be a good fit for the job. So that's another reason we do it. You've told your kid their whole lives, stranger danger, don't talk to strangers, don't talk to strangers, don't talk to strangers. Well, I'm telling them they have to. And I actually make them do an introduction assignment where they have to go around and introduce themselves to people that they don't know. And they hate it. <laughs> and I make them do it anyway. I tell them, go in groups. If you're really uncomfortable going and talking to people by yourself, go in groups. I've even gone out with a student who had such bad anxiety. He's like, I, I can't do this. And I'm like, yeah, you can. We'll do it together. And so we went and he introduced himself to an instructor he didn't know and then to a student he didn't know. And he's like, I got this now. I can go do this. He says, I can now see myself being successful at it. So now I can do it. So yeah, 
when they come home and say, you know, Ms. Steger tells me I need to talk to strangers, yeah, I really do. Because networking is the way to get a job. It's not so much what you know anymore as it is who you know. I got this job through networking. That's just the way of the world these days. So, yeah, they have to talk to strangers. So don't get mad at them. You can get mad at me, but yes, they do have to do that. So they got to get out of their comfort zone. Introduce themselves to learning specialists, faculty, other students. I will not let them introduce themselves to their own learning specialist, obviously. Um, and I actually kind of watch what goes on around and who they talk to. Because I tell them, I say, say, tell them at the beginning, this is an assignment for a class. So it doesn't sound so creepy as, hi, I'm so-and-so, who are you? So it doesn't sound quite so creepy. So they do really well with it. And then we go into um, the junior level class of career planning. And this is where we start hitting the internship possibilities and the internship requirements really, really hard. Um, they are required to get 80 hours of internship before they graduate. They cannot graduate with a bachelor's degree without a minimum, I should say, of 80 hours. We have students that graduate with 1,000 hours, but they have to have a minimum of 80 hours. Um, I recommend they do many different experiences because if they only do one experience then they only know one thing and if that experience is just okay then they might end up at a job for the rest of their lives well not for the rest of their lives but for the time being that's just okay I want them to find something that they love I want to find them passion so if they do a, you know a multiple experiences within their internship they're gonna find things that they might hate and I think crossing things off is just as important as finding the things you like I didn't do my internship in my undergrad when I went back for my education degree my internship was my senior year last semester and they put me in a first grade classroom and I remembered how much I don't like six, six year olds and it totally ruined the whole thought of being an elementary school teacher so now I teach college and I love this but if I would have done that internship earlier on I probably would have changed my major and gone into adult education earlier than I did. So that's why I say they need to find the things that they like and find the things that they don't like. So multiple experiences is really important. And the internships must be approved by Ms. Lopez, so she gets to talk about this. Okay. Um, when they come to our offices, one of the things that we work with them is the cover letter and the resume writing. And we did this actually for an event that happened about two weeks ago with Dell Technologies on campus. We had the opportunity to sit down with the students, edit their students, revise their, their resumes, or even actually go from scratch to build their resume. And I'm going to show you a resource that the college provides to, uh, for the students to start working on that as well. Um, we do the career assessment and exploration. I know Lori mentioned about what are some of the things that she uses within the classroom, but I'm going to show you within the resource that there's two career assessments that the students can use within their own time. That's going to give them um, information how they can um, learn about careers within their fields and um, skills and abilities. What are some of the things that they can do if they're undecided within the process? The mock interviews, we do mock interviews. I know Lori works with the students um, doing mock interviews in the classroom or panel interviews, I believe, in one of her courses. But we do the mock interviews with them. And one of the things that we have learned from employers, and this has been going on for more than two years, is that employers have moved from the face-to-face -face interview more into phone interview and Skype interviews. And we want to prepare the students to, um, for that challenge when they're going to be facing that. One of the things that we have in the Career Development Center, we have a TV monitor that we're going to be using that to help students to practice for the Skype interviews with us. The internship opportunities, as you notice, um, Lori mentioned that they have an 80-hour graduation requirement. One of the things that we advise students is if they're not able to do the 80 hours within one internship, they can divide it in two. And it's an opportunity for them to have a new experience. Uh, we assist them with finding the internships as well. Um, one of the things we mentioned earlier as we were preparing for this presentation is you're our best advocate. If you um, know of a company that has internship opportunities, if you work for a company that provides internship opportunities, please reach out to us. One of the things that we have moved away is from having the small um, organization internships. We're looking to reach out to big organizations that can have paid internship for our students. 
They would like for them to come on campus and meet our students face to face. We don't want to talk to them over the phone anymore. We don't want to go um, via email. We want to um, establish that relationship with them early on for them to come to campus like um, a company, one of the companies did, Dell Technologies came on campus, they met with our students, they actually facilitated a presentation. We have about 38 students who um, attended the presentation and then after that they interview our students on campus. That's the kind of model that we want to create now. And um, when we said we reach out to you because you're our first advocate when it comes to that. Um, job search strategies, we work with them in finding employment. One of the things that Esteban and I are working, and Esteban is going to tell you more about what he does, is going out to meet with companies and try to bring those employment opportunities here so we can um, connect the students with the jobs. Um, the, the, networking the networking skills and the graduate um, school application are the things that we work with them um, hand on hand. Um, our students don't need to do an appointment to come and visit with us. They can do a walk-in at any time. My job is to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. My job is to make sure that they're ready before they make that transition into the workplace. And uh, let me show you the resource that the college um, acquired. It's been about a year ago. Yeah, we just found out about it then. Yes, it's something new, and we're promoting this resource right now. It's called Job and Career Accelerator. The students can find this from um, the college website, actually from the library website. And this is what they can find. They can build, if you can find, they can actually do matching, explore occupations. They can actually find internships and jobs from this website. One of the good things about this system, I just wanted to show you these. If a student has not created a resume before, they can actually start a resume from scratch and a cover letter from scratch. It provides examples within the system. It provides a list of accomplishment, uh, um, accomplishment, the accomplished verbs within the system that they can use. Another part of the system that is great is, as you scroll down here, when it says interview with confidence, students are able to even answer questions like if they were on an interview and compare their answers to common questions. So little by little, we're gonna be promoting this program more and more into the classroom, going into the classroom, sharing that with faculty, just so they'll know what are some of the things that they can start doing with, with the students and letting the students know what's available for them away from coming just to visit with us. Um, when it comes to the internships, I know parents have questions in the past, like if we find the internship for the students. We provide the tools and assist them in the process. Right now we're working with partnerships, just to give you an example, that um, a partnership that we created a couple of weeks ago, Goodwill Industries, was one of the ones that we created. Um, because when we go out for partnerships, we look at all of our majors. We not only focus, we are walking away from just having um, any type of um, unpaid internship, we're actually having program specific internships. So the students can apply their skills and the abilities that they are learning in the classroom so they can put them into place, either for a 40 hour internship or an 80 hour internship. Um, let me see. Another thing is the informational sample letters for students who are looking for internships also that they can use as well. So as we are making the career development department grow, um, right now, it's the three of us. We actually assist each other, uh, making sure that we get our students prepared and ready. Um, we're available to assist you as well. Our contact information is at the bottom of the sheet. Our email address is at the bottom of the sheet. We also have business cards. If you want to come and talk to us, if you have any questions, feel, please feel free to reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to assist you. And this is found right on the Beacon College website. You go into um, the library link, and it's located right within the library link. Um, they can go and see Miss Tiffany in the library and get one-on-one -on -one tutorial from her on how to use it, or they can go and see Miss um, Miss Ramos and she can help them as well. I'm hoping to have Miss Tiffany come into at least one of my classes and go through it with them too, just to because like I said, I have a captive audience; they can't leave. So just so they can get a quick overview of, of what it is, but it's a really powerful tool. And I think it's at the public library across the street too. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they have um, access to it at the public library as well. So um, even past graduation, they would be able to access this and use this. And then, um, like Ms. Ramos was saying, we had Dell Technologies here two weeks ago. They actually interviewed 10, 11 of our students. 11 of our students. They're looking for two, two paid internships in Texas. 
and they're really hoping that if this works out well, it could be an ongoing yearly thing. So that's what we're really, really hoping for. How would that work, though? I mean, if, if they received an internship in Texas when they've got classes that they have... No, it's a summer internship. Oh, it's a summer, it's a summer internship. internship. It's a full okay. summer internship aid, $15 an hour, approximately $15 an hour. Okay. They provide a place to live that the mm -hmm. students have to get to the internship, and that's been one of the things we've talked about um, transportation-wise, and we're working through those questions now, I think. But... Um, yeah, that's a fantastic opportunity. It's a, just an absolutely fantastic opportunity. The fact that we have an opportunity like that in Little Beacon is pretty amazing. So how does Beacon interact with the company while the student is there, or if at all? Because, you know, how do you support the success of this student in this enterprise? Well, one of the things that we try to do is maintain contact with the company throughout. Um, once a student starts an internship, one of the first things that they need to do is a pre-evaluation with their supervisor. And it's pretty much letting us know how are they doing, um, how comfortable the student is, and it's an opportunity for us to know what are the areas that we need to work with with the students. And so if you find out these things, are you then interacting with the student during the internship? Yes, there might be. There's a couple of things that we're creating in the process right now. So you're um, coaching. You're coaching. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. We have to in order for them to be successful. Right. And Ms. Ramos is a 12-month employee, so she would be here during the summer, so mm -hmm. she would be available to talk to them if they had questions or concerns and need, need help. And, uh, I, I just would like to add, uh, we reach out to these large corporations. I'm going to give you the example of Disney. So I went down to Orlando, talked to the Disney people, and we were discussing about recruiting our students. Disney recruits about 8,000 interns every year, 4,000 every six months. And uh, those are paid internships. They pay, they, they guarantee a minimum of 32 hours of work for our students. They are placed in these villas, in this apartment complex. That are, it's like being at the Floridian. It's, they are beautiful. They have pools. They have dining areas. They provide transportation, all kinds of things. It's really nice. Um, so I ask and I say, well, how many out of those 4,000 students that you recruit every six months, they have learning disabilities? And they say about 100 of them. Um, what they told me is, once w your students go through the application process and we offer the internship to them, we do everything that is necessary to accommodate whatever learning disability or uh, need for that particular student. So they have a psychologist on board and that particular psychologist do Disney World here and Disneyland in California. She's the only go-to person to, to provide those accommodations. So and, uh, actually, very rapidly, the, 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 the meeting went into, well, you are Beacon College. You have a degree of expertise with these students, so we would like to learn from you. So eventually, like 15 minutes into these conversations, we were providing kind of the name of faculty members and people that uh, the, the provide uh, training here on campus so they can improve the, the, what they are doing at Disney. So, we have that, those type of interactions with these organizations. They usually come to us and I say, we really were, we were accepted for the last five years, but now at the tipping point in which we are gonna, we're ready to do this. But we need training, we need advice, we need someone to provide uh, additional ideas. So you are successful at doing it for your students through the college process, so we would like to be successful at the workplace. So we interact with them in that sense. Um, so um, it's, one of the things that we're trying to do here at Beacon, and that's uh, pretty much has been the uh, uh, direct instruction from Dr. Haggerty, the president of these institutions, is go out, reach out to them, bring them on campus. It's so it's not black and white, it's not like, because nowadays everything is online. You go to Disney, the first time that I call Disney, they say everything is online, send your students to our application, everything is there, and no, 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 I want a visit with you. And I want you to come to my institution and have lunch with my students. So the level of engagement is totally different. So what so. would happen in an instance where there was a problem, say, in the living situation that wasn't directly related to the employer, but it's a problem? It could be any problem. I could give you five examples. But the student needs the kind of support that they might get from an RA or, you know, some of the other people that you've provided here at Beacon to support them. What? I think they would probably either contact Mr. Lopez or Ms. Ramos. Again, they're both 12-month employees, so they would be on campus. I am not. Yeah. Just putting that I'm, I'm, You can't I, call me. Um. <laughs> and, and what you just said is, is totally true. It's like any kind of situation might happen. So all of these situations are different. So I think the answer is intervention. Mm -hmm. 
is the call, either the student or the company, or we found out or something like that, and uh, is intervention. So we put together, there's several people on campus, and there's a lot of resources here on campus that we can go to and say it could be the learning special, the counselor, it could be Lori, it could be Mrs. Ramos. Uh, either one of us will start kind of putting together an, a solution to that situation. But we do intervene in those kind of situations. Locally for us, usually is the phone call is around what else we can do or what else you can do. Or sometimes we develop this one-on-one -on -one relationship with these corporations that they, sometimes they say, well, you know, we usually don't provide this type of feedback to colleges and universities. But in your case, I have such and such a student with a typo in her resume or such and such a student with a very weak handshake. So fix that. So uh, those kind of things. So they put a name on it and, and we can go back directly to the student in a very soft manner and kind of say, well, let's re rework on this or something like that. Um, but that's the thing. Lori worked with your students throughout the four years. We have a four-year model. Uh, junior year, senior year, uh, Dinora is kind of, try start kind of smoothing the edges. It's kind of polish those things. And um, in my case, it is like I go out and bring those opportunities here. I would like to talk just for three minutes about what? that is. What's your name uh, here? <laughs> so. <laughs> The Dell Opportunity, this is a Fortune 500 uh, company. Actually, they are ranked 41. Uh, this is a $115 billion organization with 138,000 employees worldwide. They have 13,000 uh, employees in Round Rock, uh, Rock uh, Texas. Uh, so the internship is going to be located there for two of our students, so $15 per hour, more or less. Um, they are going to be placed in a very nice apartment. And one of the things that we were having this conversation is they were saying they are going to have to share with another intern. Uh, but uh, based on the assessment, it, they might have to share with the very same Beacon student. Uh, uh, student. Um, so what else? They are going to pay expenses to fly in and out the student from Texas. Uh, the only thing that is not covered is um, the apartment is not, is, is not going to be taken out of the $15. So that's on top of the $15. The only thing is that the student they are going to have to drive. Uh, in and out. So uh, right now uh, we're talking to the Dell people, trying to find out a place that is no more than five or six miles away from the uh, workplace. Um, but th that's the, the challenge right now is we're trying to identify like these apartments. Um, so that's Dell, the Disney. I just mentioned Disney. Um, just uh, last week I just uh, had um, this wonderful conversation with this organization in Boston. It's called United for a Fair Economy. It's a large nonprofit organization. They do a lot of lobbying in Washington. Um, their agenda is economic equality in America, so they have published about 100 books already. They are very knowledgeable. The founder of this organization used to work, was an economic advisor for Bill Clinton, and so on and so on and so on. So it's a great opportunity. Um, so they are coming at by the end of October. We're trying to replicate the Dell model and we're pushing them to pay also $15 per hour. Um, they are going to provide an estipend, transportation estipend, and they are going to give the students kind of the, the car so they can use the public transportation. I believe it's, it's called the T in Boston. Uh, so uh, for these students to go around. So we are hoping for them to recruit two of our students. Yes? Who are some of the um, internships that you have available for students in human services? Well, that, that's another thing. Uh, we have a little bit of everything. But just before I go into your specific uh, question, mm -hmm. Uh, again, Dr. Hierarchy uh, asked us, uh, go out and recruit large companies for our students. They really need to have big names in their resumes and also they can put uh, these references and say, my boss was such and such, the director of such and such at Disney or Dell Technology or something like that. That's really, really good for our students. Um, so, but uh, although we're trying to do more of that and that actually by the end of October or actually we push it to November the first week of November is the employer appreciation date we're going to invite about 15 employers on campus we're going to have a half day agenda for them so they are going to be able to interact with our students uh, so that creates a whole different relationship but again just last week we were talking to a theater here in Lisbon. So they are putting together plays, Halloween plays, the Christmas play, and they need interns, uh, interns to sell tickets or even to participate on the play. So it's a very nice experience as well. And it's, it's just within walking distance, it's just a few blocks from here. So we have a mix of everything, everything. Uh, about two weeks ago, I sent out um, a few invitations to a, um, a couple of universities abroad. One of them in particular, uh, 
reply back saying, well, we might, we're talking inside our college, but we might be visiting Florida. We want to talk to you guys and learn as much as we can about learning disabilities. We would like to do something about something like that in our particular college. This particular institution is in South America. They have a bio uh, station in the Amazon jungle and uh, it's in a national reserve called uh, Yasuni. In that particular national reserve, uh, they have this bio station. It's the most diverse bio station in the world. In one square mile, you can find more uh, birds, animals, snakes, ants, or trees and plants than in the entire North, North American continent. So it's amazing. It's, it's, a, it's a dream come true for if you are a biology major. We're an so we're zoology major. yeah, an zoology major. So we're pointing in that direction because we have that degree that is new, and we're trying to build relationships for our students as well down there. So we're doing all of those things. But the thing is, the more companies that we bring here, more opportunities we have for our students. And and just to finalize uh, this section with Dell, something you need happen with Dell. We went back and forth by mail and on the phone, in my case, by phone at least at least eight times, by mail at least 15 times. We started that like a month before. And they were, we only wanna, want to interview juniors, please, just juniors, 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 juniors. Our model here at Dell is for juniors. Seniors won't work with us. So we talk and talk to them and eventually we say, well, come to campus. Uh, actually, uh, the presentation was attended by 38 of our students. 11 of them went into the interview process. And two of them uh, are gonna receive an internship offer in uh, next week or probably uh, the following week. But then eventually in that, in, over those conversations, uh, they say, uh, or we start kind of saying, well, since you are gonna be here on campus, how about the mock interviews, if you talk to our students, you help them understand this networking thing, um, tips here and there, and they say, well, okay. So they went beyond the, the, the junior thing. They came on campus, they talked to juniors and seniors, and at the end of the day, but the, the last day, they say, well, they got so impressed with one of our seniors that they are gonna extend that job offer to, to is a she. So uh, she's gonna receive a job offer soon from Dell. And at the beginning they were like, no, 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 just juniors, uh, everything is online, and that kind of thing. But once they are here on campus and they interact with our students, they, they usually are like, and actually we have that uh, feedback from them and they say, well, like, incredible. So the students got well prepared, everything was uh, in the right place, other than t a couple of resumes, I believe out of the 11 that they found a type or something like that. But, uh, but yeah, very okay, minor, so they were so impressed. So they recruit two interns and they are gonna hire one of our students. Yes. So you're selecting what students get to interview and what no. students don't get to interview? No, no, no. no. no Actually, what we, we do don't. is a, an incredible push. So we send we, we post posters in every single bulletin board on campus. The student center is populated by these posters. We go into classrooms. We talk to the students. We invite faculty members. We talk to faculty members and say, could you please talk to your students at class? And they say, can you please come over? And we do. So we go at lunchtime, we, we walk through classrooms and all that, and that, that type of thing. So, but every now and then we have students that are ready, our students that are almost ready, and um, that we have some students that are gonna be ready for the next opportunity that is lining up. Yeah? They don't have scheduled times with both of you. They, they can come in and, and work with you guys anytime. So how much time should they be devoting to that as seniors? My son's a senior, so. Can't as much as they can. But what would uh, you suggest per week, or how, how often should they be doing If they're a senior, I, I suggest a, a minimum of a, a one visit per week. Okay. Uh, that will be my suggestion, mm -hmm. just to f so you can keep track on, on things. Right. Some of them, they might, might be ready, um, but some of them, they really need um, two or three visits just to get their resume and cover letter at the right place. So, yeah, but in that sense, is cover letters, but I do it in a classroom setting, mm -hmm. so they can take that and take it to um, Ms. Ramos or Mr. Lopez and have it like perfected. I can't. I mean, I have two ninety-two students total, so I can't do one-on-one -on -one with every single one of them. So we do like the rough. You know, they make it to my specifications, and then they can take it to be perfected. Yeah, that's uh, what I tell them to do. One more thing, and I would like to share this with you. Um, <coughs> And I think this is also intentional. Uh, Dr. Harity told me, you have to go out and bring those big corporations to campus. 
about seven years ago, I went to this seminar in the Northeast and attended by many colleges and universities. And it was, you have this keynote speaker. And I remember something that he said back in that day. And he said, no one rises to low expectations. And that kind of stuck with me. So once we bring these gigantic names here and these big opportunities, the students, they are like, oh, <coughs> they mean business. If I say, well, you are gonna go to the Red Cross around the corner for summer. Okay, I'll still mingle around at the student center, do something. But if they see these really, really important opportunities, they rise to the occasion. And they, it, it, it's a transformative experience. Whenever we have a big company coming on campus, that energy lasts for another two weeks. You have the students even dressing, wearing uh, ties or something that, uh, like that. The day after this, the, the recruiters are gone, <laughs> it's incredible. But um, that's something that we're doing in an intentional uh, way. And we've actually had students go through the Disney um, college program as an intern. And my, one of my students as a learning specialist he is now a full-time Disney employee and the happiest, the happiest guy on earth, literally. <laughs> he, he, he was a Disney freak and he's just, he's in heaven. Um, we also do Lifestream. We've had a very successful internships done at Lifestream. Um, one of our students, they liked her so much, they offered her a job. Unfortunately for them, she was going to graduate school, so she d declined the job, but they offered her a job immediately after at the end of her internship. So we've had some real success stories. And you are powerful resources. So if you know anyone, if you want to share, like, ah, oh, you know, I know, I know someone who knows someone. So here's her name, his name. You should contact that person. Will do. Will do. So like you said, we talk a lot about networking. Um, 30 second commercial, elevator speech, whatever anybody calls it. Tell me about yourself. That's the answer to tell me about yourself in your job interview. And I make them rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it and rehearse it. I never say the word memorize. I do not want them to memorize it. Because if you memorize it and you forget a word, you're stuck. Whereas if you've rehearsed it, then you can just skip that part and just keep on going. Which is what I want them to do. Not, uh, oh man, what was that? Oh, I don't remember. It's about you. Yeah, you do know it. So rehearse, not memorize. Um, we go through researching techniques. We talk about networking. We go to a, a large job fair. The senior level class, we go to a large job fair in Orlando. Because when I moved to Orlando and I had to go to my first job fair, I was all by myself and it was terrifying. So we go to a job, a large job fair. All of the seniors go together. They have to register for it. They have to have their resumes. They have to be dressed appropriately. And then we go together. So it's not terrifying anymore. So that if they have to go to job fairs on their own post-graduation, they can say, I've done this. Piece of cake. Um, I use my beach ball. They love it when I bring out the beach ball. It has interview questions. I throw it at them. I don't let it throw them at each other because that ends up in, yeah, a nightmare, doesn't it, Katya? <laughs> so I throw the beach ball to them and they have to answer the whatever question their right thumb lands on. And it's a good way for them to share. Like if they get a question, um, what are your strengths? Like what are your strengths? And they'll be like, oh, what are my strengths? And usually the rest of the class will start telling them what their strengths are. <laughs> so it's a really, I mean, and they're like, wow, cool. You think that? You think so? And it's, it's really um, motivating for them when they do that. And they just, they love the beach ball. I use beach balls for so many different things. And they just get so excited when they see the beach balls. <laughs> love the beach balls. Um, like I said, we do the, the um, resumes and the career center helps some of that. Interviewing skills. In the junior level class, they have an inter a final interview. Their final interview is with me, but I have a two-page rubric, 10 things that they are rated on. It's pretty tough. And then in the senior class, they actually have a panel interview. I try to make it as real world as I possibly can. They walk into a room not having any idea who is behind the door and have to go in an interview with them. I send out an email to all the faculty and staff at Beacon, and I put the names and their, their time slots, and I say, please sign up for people you do not have a close relationship with. And it's tough. It's really tough. I give them a, a job description that they're interviewing for, the student gets it, and the interviewers get it, 
but they can ask him anything they want. <laughs> and they come up with some wild things. If you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? <laughs> and why? <laughs> so, and we talk a lot about thinking outside the box. And, you know, you're going to get some of these off-the-wall questions, but all of these off-the-wall questions serve a purpose. They're seeing how fast you think. They're seeing what your values are. They're thing, seeing what you think about the world in some instances. So, the off-the-wall questions are... There for a purpose, a lot of open-ended questions. So they're going to go to Goodwill, the seniors go to Goodwill so that they can learn how to dress on a budget. I had a student in the summer, he got a complete interview suit. Jacket, shirt, suspenders, because he didn't like belts, pants and shoes for $20.02. And he wore that for his final interview and aced it. So you can dress for a budget. And they're like, oh, I don't have a suit, I can't afford a suit. Yes, you can. And you're going to have to have one. Yeah, you have to have one for my senior interview. But you're going to need one when you walk out the door, too. Because you're going to want to dress to impress. You don't interview for the job you're interviewing, or you don't dress for the job you're interviewing for. You dress for the job you want. Uh, now that you mentioned that, you make an impression. One of our students with the Dell people uh, was wearing a bow tie. <laughs> uh, we went out for a lunch with the Dell people, and they were talking and talking and talking about the <laughs> it was memorable. memorable. Yeah, they were they were very impressed with our students. Um, they called me and we had a long conversation afterwards, and they were extremely impressed with the interview skills of our students and the way they presented themselves. So it was really good feedback. And I, t I tell all of them, I said, yes, not everybody's going to get offered the job on your interview. Not everybody's going to be offered the internship. But you had a learning experience. You did an interview, a very professional interview, and reflect upon that so that the next one's going to be even better. Um, the resume, if they take their resumes to the career center, they're guaranteed an A+. Plus. I tell them that all the time. You're guaranteed an A+, plus if you take it down there, and then I don't even have to worry about it. I like those kind of gradings. Um, we do a lot of um, exploration. We, I have a lot of guest speakers. I have the um, Beacon Human Resources man, um, director come in and talk to them. And he tells them a lot of the same things that I've been telling them. So they know that I'm not just making it up. And, he, and one thing he tells them, we talk a lot about keywords. Your resumes and your cover letters are going to go through scanning software most of the time. Any larger company, they, they run it through scanning software. If you have not looked at that job posting, and pull the important information out and put it in at least your cover letter, it's going in the garbage. And he even brings that more to, speaking of Beacon, Beacon, you know, we don't have scanning software, we're a little tiny place, but he says when he's reading through resumes and it says anything about our mission statement or anything about our vision or anything about anything that's on our front page of our website, top of the pile. Top of the pile. Those keywords are imperative. Um, cover letter, the key, oh, I just said that. What I, I try to make it fun with the keywords, they have to take a job posting, and I don't know if you've ever seen word clouds, but it's got like, it looks like a cloud with all the words in it, so they have to take the job posting and put it into a word cloud, and then all of the big, bold words are those keywords, they have to incorporate those into their cover letters. That is an activity they have to do, whether they like it or not. <laughs> you didn't mind it that bad, don't you begin? <laughs> um, interviewing skills, we rehearse questions, we rehearse poise, professionalism. They have to introduce themselves and do the ending handshake and thanking at the end over and over and over again. We talk a lot about interview attire. Job searching skills, LinkedIn, I'm mad at LinkedIn so we're not using them anymore. Um, they actually locked out eight of my students. And they said they had to give their passport number or their driver's license number to reactivate their accounts. And I told them, don't do that. And so I emailed LinkedIn, and their response was basically, they must have done something illicit or illegal or attempted to, mul to um, access multiple accounts. I'm like, not my kids. Nope. So LinkedIn, it's, LinkedIn is dead to me. <laughs> but we use Monster Career Builder Indeed. And then we talk a lot about fraudulent job postings, how to recognize if it's a scam or if it's real. Um, how to read job postings, how to make the best impressions. And most of all, we talk about self-confidence. If you act like you have confidence, even if you're not feeling it in your gut, you eventually will. You will feel it. Um, skills and knowledge, taking the mystery out of the job hunt. We give them the tools. The three of us are giving them the tools to be successful. 
We can't make them successful, but we give them the tools so they can make themselves successful. And any questions? Don't be shy. Just ask. Yes, sir. Do you have anybody from the um, private sector or other nonprofits that would come in and interview students? I mean, I, I do that from where I'm from. I've I thought can... about it, but my schedule is so tight that it's kind of difficult. And my senior classes are later in the afternoon. They're from like 4 to 6. Okay. But yes, I'd like to, I want to expand it into that. I really do. It's just someone finding does, the time. Someone who does a lot of hiring, one of the things I didn't see on here that I always do is um, I always look on their social media account. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I, I talk to them about Facebook stalkers. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, what you, what, what students put on there, you know, sort of, um, and uh, typically I do that before I read a resume. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, I, I'm, I'm very good at Facebook stalking people. Um, I'm involved in a lot of the hiring at Beacon. Yeah, I know everybody's Facebook. Um, yeah, we talk about what you shouldn't have on there, what you should have on there, definitely how you should change it once you get closer to the job search, and if you have things on there that you need to create one with your name and take your name off from that one so when they Google you, I make them Google themselves. So what comes up when you Google themselves? What comes up when you Google yourself? What's the first thing people find? And then one more question about the internships. Can, are, do the inter can the internships happen in their freshman, sophomore? Do they actually yes. have to happen in no, a particular no, year? No, 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 no. Okay, I, start, I start pushing a sophomore. Perfect. And I tell them, you know, if you go home for Christmas, you go home for the summer, and your dad is best friends with the CEO or the president of a computer company, and you're a CIS major, tell dad to hook you up. <laughs> Definitely. No, um, we actually prefer them to do their internships when they're on break because it takes the stress away. If they're doing their internships during the school year, then they've had it's like adding another class almost to their to their workload. So on that, um, what information do you need to for them to get credit for that? If they <laughs> what information do they need to get credit? If they do do an internship at home over the summer. What do you need in order to apply that to their for their hours? Basically, what we need is the pre and post evaluation from them and the full information from the employer, the contact information. Because one of the things that we're doing, we follow up after they turn on the information just to find out, you know, how their experience was, anything that they would like to share with us. Yeah, they can um, get a, either an electronic copy or a paper copy of the pre and post evaluation at the Career Center. Yeah. Another thing is sometimes, and uh, this is very common actually, we get contacted by uh, organizations saying we need volunteers, which is good. Mm -hmm. But we try to convince them into internships, which is we need the students to go into staff meetings, to be part of projects, those kind of things, so they can get credit for it. Mm -hmm. If they all just go and clean the river or something like that, it's not enough. So. And the pre and post evaluation form, they pick that up at the Career Center? They can pick it up, we can email it to them. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh, you're welcome. What if it's a job and not an internship? I'm sorry, ma'am? If it's a job. If it's related to their degree plan, we consider it as an internship also. So they can get credit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're we've welcome. been pretty lax in the past on internships, and a lot of them did not align with their majors. We're trying to get as far away from that as we can. I mean, a CIS major checking out books at the library, mm, not really the best experience for what they're doing. But it's Leesburg. You've been here. You see what we got. But they're working on it. They're really working on it. I mean, we have a team now, which is so nice. This is, since I've been here, this is the first time there is a career team working for your students. So you guys are here at a really good time. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Do you recommend that all of the kids go to any of the um, information sessions with the companies? Like I think they should go to all of them. Major? I think they should go to all of them. You'd be surprised what opportunities there are within a company that people don't think of. I mean, a human services major going to an IBM, there's human services in IBM, you know, there's, there's a combination of so many different skills required in every company. And that's a powerful tip actually. If you go for instance to a career fair, a job fair, and you go and the first thing that you get is the directory 
and you find out like 60 companies are in that place and you find out that one of them is your dream job, you don't go to that booth. Uh, that's not the first booth that you go. You start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven booths before that. So you get loose, your self-esteem goes up, you kind of practice and then you hit that dream job. So, and that's the same thing. You don't wait until your dream company is here just to go and sometimes you are not ready and you blew it. So you have to go uh, to, even to those that for you are like, I'm gonna be there, just sit around and kind of learn about it. That's really, really important. And another thing that I have to say is that it's really fun to work with your kids. <coughs> it's really, really fun. They're amazing. But every experience is giving them, giving them an opportunity to talk to professionals, to, you know, to use those professional skills that I'm trying to instill in their brains and to not have their cell phone in their hands. Just saying. Just saying, right? Where should your cell phone be? Not near your hand, right? Not near your hand. <laughs> Question. Would you be willing to share those sheets where you had the examples of the different jobs under the different oh, majors? Oh, certainly, yeah. yeah if you That's could. of interest to me. Oh, um, yeah, if you write, and they're actually, on, on, well, most of it's on Saunas. Okay. But if you wanted to write your email address down up here, I could I can email. All right. I can email it to you. I will do that. I Thank can email you. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Thanks. I'll share anything. I'm open. <laughs> so, any other questions? I want to thank you guys so much you. for coming and joining us and letting us have part of your morning. Thank you. Thank you very like, much. Like Esteban said, we love your kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah really good.